Hey guys, Nirion here. What we're currently witnessing is a huge snowball effect of one company after the other getting exposed for their horrible business practices. There's a bunch of insane stories that I wanted to cover today that really showcase how crucial this current Gamergate 2 situation is for the future of video games. First off, we'll cover how Blizzard has managed to reach a new all-time low as a company, how they continue to ruin Overwatch 2 beyond repair with a new announcement that's a huge slap in the face of fans, how they have chosen woke investors over their passionate community and how they've been exposed to cover up their awful business strategies with some shallow virtue signaling. Fans are angrier than ever and even Asmongold joined the backlash in support of fans and slammed Blizzard. After that we'll cover how Sweet Baby Inc. continues to infiltrate more and more games and now increasingly even takes aim at the Japanese industry, with them infiltrating one big gaming company after the other. From Square Enix to now Bandai Namco, with this disastrous results as a consequence. But first, we start with the current Blizzard situation, cause how massively they screwed up Overwatch and continue to make it worse with each new announcement just proves that the company has indeed reached a new all-time low. The Overwatch 2 developers have now stated that the story missions that were hyped up for so long have most likely been completely cancelled. The PvE campaign was pitched as the sequel's big pillar, yet now ex-devs tell Kotaku its future is unclear. You don't even have to be an Overwatch fan to understand what a dirty move this is on Blizzard's part. This is just a huge slap in the face of loyal Overwatch fans. Me included, since Overwatch 1 used to be my favorite game and it still stands as my most played game of all time and it's not even close with well over a thousand hours, probably even closer to 2000 that I've spent in the game. They've discontinued work on Overwatch 1 almost completely in 2019 or so, because Blizzard said that they want to put their entire focus on developing the sequel. They've announced a bunch of stuff, but the main selling point of the sequel was the story campaign. They've hyped that up for years as the reason why they're even making a sequel. Working on the PvE story mode was their excuse for discontinuing their work on Overwatch 1. Yet then Overwatch 2 launched with a lot of hype again, and yet it didn't have a story mode. But then Blizzard quickly announced that their still hard at work on it and it will release eventually, but at a later date. Now that was a massive disappointment already that really angered new players, but especially old ones that had already waited for years, only to find out that it's still not ready. And now, years later once again, they say that the story mode probably won't even come at all and is most likely cancelled. Kotaku wrote, and I quote, In the last few months, Overwatch 2 fans have grown increasingly worried about the state of the hero shooter story missions. These missions were a pillar of the sequel's initial pitch at BlizzCon 2019, the shiny new thing that merited making a new game instead of patching the original one, like most live service projects. But since Overwatch 2's October 2022 launch, only one set of missions have been released in August 2023. Currently, there's no release window for more. For Blizzard, the January Xbox layoffs primarily affected developers working on those missions. What's more, recent changes to Overwatch 2's menus suggest story missions are, at the very least, being deprioritized. Since the 2019 announcement, Overwatch 2 has transformed into something almost unrecognizable from those original promises. What was pitched as a sequel that would exist alongside the first hero shooter became a free-to-play title that completely replaced the first game, leaving the original 6v6 rule set unplayable. Blizzard gutted the promised PvE modes and outright cancelled hero mode, which would have added replayable levels and customizable skill trees. Now there are just three 30-minute missions available and those are relegated to the smallest section of Overwatch 2's game mode screen. Now some of the developers fear their years of work won't see the light of day. End quote. Blizzard truly is a freaking mess of a company. They drove up hype for the game with the story mode announcement and promises and heavily monetized the game with one of the greediest battle passes and in-game stores the gaming industry has ever seen just to capitalize on the hype yet never actually deliver the things they promised. And the fans are mad. Even Asmongold reacted to the news on stream and shared his frustration about Blizzard lying to its fans after they passionately supported the company for so long. Too bad, Overwatch PvE might get cancelled. No. Are you kidding me? Is this a joke? Overwatch 2 devs fear story missions might have been cancelled. So, let me get this straight. So, we were originally gonna get this much. 
Overwatch 2 will feature a ton of PvE content. We will have a complete story experience. And then they did the big announcement and they said, you're gonna get this much. With everything we've learned about what it takes to operate this game at the level that you deserve, it's clear that we, we can't deliver on that original vision for PvE that was shown in 2019. Going forward though, rather than doing a big one-time PvE releasing, and we, we want you to be able to experience it more often and with more variety than we had originally announced. And now they're saying, we're not even going to get this? It's not even... Actually, why am I saying we? I haven't played this fucking game since it came out. It's so sad to see what Overwatch has become. Gold has a long relationship with Blizzard, since he's a huge World of Warcraft player and I think the biggest streamer of that game on Twitch. So he oftentimes exposed them, attacked them whenever they screwed up things and criticized them for their bad games. Not just World of Warcraft, but also Diablo and now even Overwatch. As you will see, he continues to go over some interesting stuff that gets mentioned in the Kotaku article. Uh, they say, they used to say all the time they would essentially need two 400-people teams, one for PvP and one for PvE. Really? You need two 400-people teams? Uh, how much do you want to bet people that are working on Pal World or Path of Exile? I bet they could do it with less than 400 people. Because there's no way you need 400 people to do this? It's insane. Helldivers 2 is like 200 people. So they're gonna, if they're gonna make more of that stuff, they just laid off the people that they're working on it. Oh, wow. So they just laid off the people that were working on the story missions? Most of the people laid off from the Overwatch team were working on that pillar. Wow. Work on the campaign mission was currently held up in pursuit of a nebulous thing called Blizzard quality. Blizzard quality is a justification to essentially piss about forever and ever, redoing the same work over and over. The source said some executive goes, hmm, but is it Blizzard quality? It's always leadership or game directors deciding they need to spend extra time. So honestly, if they could have just made any kind of decisions, the game would have shipped years ago. And it's like, I don't even know what the right option is based off of this logic then Diablo 4 was Blizzard quality. Okay, well... So Overwatch 2 is a dead game. It died. Like, they actually did something that very few games can do. They killed people's hope that Overwatch will ever be anything more than a fucking joke. That's it. And as a huge Overwatch fan, I can tell you that he's right. Blizzard has ruined Overwatch. The first game used to be amazing. They created an awesome universe with so many great characters. Now, the community is still amazing. They've created so much great stuff over the years. They kept the game better alive than Blizzard ever could. It rather seemed like Blizzard was actively working against the community with how little they were doing and how the things they were doing rather ended up making the game worse. One Overwatch 2 Steam review said that people working on Overwatch Rule 34 content are putting more effort into their work than the people at Blizzard that work on the game. And while that review is funny, as someone who's familiar with both, I have to agree. Especially the numbers that were mentioned in the article seem ridiculous. Blizzard said that they need two teams of 400 people each working on Overwatch. 400 people for the PvP and 400 for the PvE. That's insane, and they're most likely being disingenuous here once again. Just to give you an idea of how these numbers hold up compared to other companies and their games. Just over 100 people worked on Path of Exile 2. Pell World had 10 employees that now expanded to 40. Helldivers 2 has around 100 employees. Warframe has 300 people working on it. Undertale was created by two people. And Five Nights at Freddy's by one guy. I will admit that some of these were indie games, but Pell World has 40 employees. And the entire studio of Helldivers 2 has 100. And they have at least a couple of those working on other projects. Not to mention that not all of them would be developers, but IT and other stuff too. Yet Blizzard wants to tell us that they would need 800 people to keep Overwatch 2 running needing 400 people per game mode is a joke of a statement. Blizzard probably needs 400 because 390 of those are HR and DEI staff and the other 10 are actual game developers. It's pathetic how Blizzard is treating their loyal player base. They discontinued the original Overwatch for a sequel no one asked for. They promised a full single player story mode, then cancelled it cause they couldn't monetize it. They removed their loot box system that was probably the most generous one in the industry where you could get 99% of content for free and replace it with an expensive in-game shop and battle pass. They start to lock every new hero behind paywalls, only to eventually backpedal and make every hero free again. Almost every decision they made ended up getting reversed back to what the original game was already. And then they used that as a strategy to get players interest back by announcing it as quote unquote content. 
And don't even get me started on all the sexual harassment at Blizzard. They've got an infinite number of controversies and screw-ups, yet they hope that we're all idiots, so every time there's backlash against them, they quickly virtue signal by pandering to certain groups in an attempt to mask their own incompetence. So guess what they did when the story mode cancellation went public? The usual strategy. They announced a new hero the day after the story was published. A new DPS hero called Venture, with a special emphasis put on the aspect that it's gonna be free and that the character is gonna be non-binary and uses they-them pronouns. As time has passed and we know that as Blizzard went through various scandals over the years, that every time they faced one of those scandals, they either create a new diverse character or make them LGBT or both. Or when they don't have a new character ready in time, they instead recreate an already existing one to be LGBT. We've seen that happen multiple times with characters like Tracer, Soldier 76 or Pharah. In those cases, it's very obvious that those creative decisions were made only to virtue signal and to save face. Blizzard used to be a sign of quality, now whenever you see their name you can get ready for garbage. The company that has 13,000 people on payroll but only 6 developers. They've ruined my once favorite game of all time and made it so that I can't even go back to play what I paid for, cause Overwatch 1 was replaced with Overwatch 2. And yet Overwatch 2 gets hammered more than any of its Rule 34 characters. No honestly, the Rule 34 artists are single handedly carrying the game. Oh man. But they are not the only garbage studio in town. Cause how could we forget to talk about Sweet Baby Incorporated? The company that should be the biggest nemesis of anyone who cares about video games. Because they don't. They instead actively try to destroy them. They've ruined countless western studios already that used to have great reputations. Yet whenever they partnered with Sweet Baby Inc, their game ended up massively inferior in quality to their other games and pushed full of political nonsense. Sweet Baby robs developers of their creative freedom and forces them to include more diversity, to push some political side quests or dialogue into the game, or to make the female characters uglier, toned down and more androgynous looking to avoid offending women and trans people apparently. A logic where I still don't get how that's supposed to help women or trans people in any way, and if anything is actually quite disrespectful and counterproductive. Women won't feel offended by attractive depictions of women in video games, and the same goes for trans women. I see it as more offensive to portray them in an ugly way, and anyone should be opposed to such business practices. Not just men, but women and trans people as well. And yet Sweet Baby doesn't see it that way, and that's one of the things that you can usually see whether a game was associated with Sweet Baby, when the female characters look ugly, cause they love to uglify them on purpose. Another upcoming AAA game that was now discovered to be associated with Sweet Baby Inc. is Unknown 9 Awakening. It's an upcoming game developed by Reflector Entertainment and published by Bandai Namco. And this is what's surprising. Bandai Namco is a Japanese company, which means that Sweet Baby Inc. is truly trying to increasingly sabotage the Japanese gaming industry as well. First they infiltrated Square Enix and that cooperation resulted in Forspoken, an awful game that neither looked nor felt like a Square Enix game. The main character Frey was an annoying black teenage girl from New York City with a horrible personality and way of talking that was put into a serious fantasy world. Something that didn't work on all fronts. The game flopped critically and financially. And on top of that, they ugly fight the actress that's playing Frey. The actress is called Ella Balinska and in reality looks quite attractive, yet they purposefully ugly fight her because of their stupid woke mindset and way of thinking. That's something that's typical sweet baby fashion, and it's something that's of course also the case in their newest game Unknown 9 Awakening. The main character will of course once again be a woman of color, for which they cast Anya Shalotra, who once again doesn't look all that bad, yet whatever they did with her face in the game is ridiculous. She looks unrecognizable. This trend of uglifying women is horrible and extremely disrespectful to the actresses portraying those characters. They cast good looking actors, yet uglify the female ones so bad that they don't even look anything like the actress. Both Forspoken, Unknown 9 and pretty much all other Sweet Baby associated games suffered from that, so that it's becoming pretty widespread knowledge at this point. And Sweet Baby is running massive damage control for this game already. As soon as you go as far as to just mention Sweet Baby in a comment on the Unknown 9 community hub on Steam, your comment will get taken down and you will receive a permanent ban. As soon as you mention Sweet Baby Inc or SBI negatively or even neutrally, you're gone. Yet something that they're not banning are defenders of Sweet Baby, even those that go as far as to insult others and make death threats. This one wrote, 
SBI haters are obsessed. Stay mad. Imagine letting a consulting firm live rent-free in your head. You can stay mad and complaining about an imaginary enemy. I am 100% buying this game. I made a lot of chuds mad. Pro tip, get a girlfriend and do something useful with your life. Also, turfs and transphobes deserve death. On top of that, you have to be a complete loser to spend your time looking at my profile for some ammo to attack me. Such comments full of insults and death threats are apparently permitted, cause they share the same political positions as Sweet Baby. I like how they go, SBI haters are so mad, but by the projection slash logic of the post, SBI hater haters are even madder. And their argument is always that if you don't like their woke nonsense, you can't attract a mate, or you must be some kind of bigot. These people are unwell. Not only is Unknown9 banning most mentions of Sweet Baby from the forums, but when you look at the bottom right at the entry credits of the game, you will find David Bedard and Kimball Lea, the co-founders of Sweet Baby Inc, working on it as brand content manager and story architect respectively. Kimball Lea is a well-known person, as she was for example the one who proudly explained the method she uses to force bosses at game studios to censor, alter and diversify game projects she feels are problematic. In her words, terrify them, aka threaten them with the anger of the cancel culture mob. One of the founders of Sweet Baby is working on the story of Unknown 9, the game is banning any mention of Sweet Baby from their community hub on Steam, and from what we've already seen, the game looks pretty bland and blurry, and they've already uglified the main actress. So get ready for yet another Sweet Baby disaster. It's called the Sweet Baby Kiss of Death for a reason, cause the company will destroy your game and potentially your company as well. What's especially shocking is that it's a Bandai Namco game, and they are a Japanese company, so Sweet Baby tries to infiltrate that industry as well now. They need to be stopped from further engaging in the Japanese gaming industry. I don't want to see them suffering the same fate as we are here in the West, cause Asia seems to be the last bastion of sanity for entertainment currently. But it's nice to see that people are coming together to expose those evil companies. Blizzard is getting exposed by gamers and big streamers like Asmongold, which is why even people that aren't even big into games are being made aware of it. And the same is true with Sweet Baby and the backlash they are getting, of which there's no end in sight as long as they keep going. Journalists have labeled this situation Gamergate 2, and if that's the case, then so be it. It's us versus them, the gaming community versus some journalists and woke companies. I wanna see who comes out on top in the end, but I think we all know who will. And with that said, continue to push back and vote with your wallet. Like the video if you enjoyed it, share it and subscribe to the channel to support me and to stay updated with what's actually going on. And other than that, thanks a lot for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll hopefully see you again next time. Until then, take care.